in the East this lunchtime. A big increase in the number of students getting top marks in their A-levels. We're at a school in Essex. Extra pictures appear on an artwork in Norfolk, which could be the work of Banksy. And some more settled conditions on the cards for the rest of the week and temperatures a little warmer. I'll have the details. Hello, let's start with a look at our A-level results, as here in the East there's been a 6.5% increase in the number of students getting the top A and A-star grades, up to nearly 45%. Overall, though, the region's pass rate, that's grades A star to E, has very slightly dropped by 0.3 of a percent. Richard Daniels spent the morning at a school in Wickford. Tears of joy, tears of relief for students at Beauchamp's High School in Wickford. Two years of disrupted sick form, forgotten in a flash. James Goddard got two A stars and an A, securing his dream course in mathematics, statistics and economics. I really wanted to get into Warwick because all my, a lot of my mates are going there and I've been to a place and I really like it and I really wanted to go to uni this year rather than retake my exams and go a different year. It was, it was very nice after I opened the envelope but it was not nice coming in and waking up at half six and stuff and not getting to sleep. In the end obviously it's all worked out all right, I got the grades I wanted so couldn't be happier really. So I got three A stars and that means I can go to King's College in London and I'm really really happy with that, it means a lot to me. Eleanor Mann, one of two students heading to Cambridge. I'm buzzing, I got three A stars um, and that means I can study history at Downing, so over the moon. So I got three A stars and that means that I can go to Cambridge to study law and obviously it just means so much, especially after the last two years. It's been an exceptionally tough time for these students. Two years of disrupted teaching because of the pandemic. Then of course they didn't know that they weren't sitting exams until this January and all the talk of grade inflation and whether they really reflect their true abilities. It's been a roller coaster ride. Homeschooling um, and doing everything online, it was hard to keep up with everything, but just to know that everything is paid off is great. I feel like I've worked so hard, harder than I probably would have if uh, it was normal circumstances because online learning was a real challenge, especially with some teachers who were ill and they couldn't teach and we had to teach ourselves, so it was a lot of you know, hard work on our part. More than 100 students collected their results at the school today. Their teachers full of admiration for their achievements. I am so incredibly proud of them. Um, some of these students I've taught for the last five years and they are, they are phenomenal. They've been phenomenal. Um, they have not once in this time stopped working, stopped persevering. They've been on the ball the whole time. Yeah, I couldn't wish anything better for them. They've been amazing. The results that the students have achieved today if I was an employer, I'd be looking at that and think, OK, these, these guys are more resilient, potentially, than cohorts before them, because they've done a great deal of this on their own. After so much doubt, relief, happiness, young adults set for the next chapter of their lives. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Wickford. And the vocational BTEC results have also come out today, including for students at Cambridge Regional College. They are graded using either a mix of teacher assessments or exams, and some are just coursework. The college says teaching hasn't been badly affected, as it's managed to timetable practical work around the lockdown. For some time we weren't, be, we weren't able to go to college or go to placement, so it was, I found it quite hard through that time, but... My, um, my teachers were really helpful and they were like, I could go to them and ask them any question and they would help me. I'm quite a fan of, of the teacher assessed grades because I have to say the process has been very robust. Although I also have to say that it's meant hours and hours of extra work for our teachers. They have been absolutely amazing and they couldn't have worked any harder. Um, but, you know, we're pleased with the results. We think that um, they are a, a very accurate reflection of the students' skills and abilities at the end of their course and you know, it's great to see so many of them doing so well and, and reaping the rewards of all their hard work. And of course we'll have more on this on tonight's Look East at 6.30. If you've got your A-level or BTEC results today, tell us how you got on, what happens next and if you feel COVID has had an impact on how you did. You can phone us on 03457 630 630. 
Email look.east at bbc.co.uk or find us on social media and please include your name and location. In other news, the family of a five-year-old boy who died following an incident at a department store in Colchester say he was loving, clever and kind. Freddie Farrow was struck by a mirror at Phoenix last month and died in hospital. His mother and father say he brought them so much happiness and they are devastated. They've also thanked Freddie's school and all the people who tried to help at the time. A 16-year-old boy is due in Northampton Crown Court later charged with murder and attempted murder in Wellingborough. 16-year-old Dylan Holliday was stabbed and later died after the incident near Brook Close on Thursday night. A 15-year-old boy who also remains injured is in hospital. Extra police patrols are being carried out in the area. Around 30 flats in a tower block in Lowestoft had to be evacuated last night after a fire. Firefighters and police were called to St Peter's Court last night to a fire in a bike shed at the basement of the building. A man has been arrested on suspicion of arson. An artwork has been added to overnight, further fueling speculation it could be the work of the famous street artist Banksy. So far, eight murals, which could be Banksy's work, have been found in the last few days in coastal parts of Norfolk and Suffolk. Mike Liggins is in Galston for us this lunchtime to tell us more. Mike. Hi Louise, yeah, great excitement in Galston on Sea. This one has been changed overnight. You might just be able to see a little teddy bear under underneath the grabber and significantly this tag banksy collaboration with emo don't know an awful lot about emo but we know that he is associated with this area he's a street artist which raises the prospect i suppose that all of these artworks are some kind of collaboration let's have a word with sue crookshank who is a local and you've been campaigning to get more street art so you must be delighted with this absolutely why, why were you camp uh, campaigning because our shelters are gray and beige yeah and we've walked every day and we've said it would be so lovely to encourage local artists to paint something in our shelters but it's great to think that Banksy got here first yeah and, and this was a Facebook campaign right well, I just posted on our Galston Sea website page that yeah. I thought it would be a really good idea it got lots of positive response yeah and maybe now that this has happened all the other shelters along the lower prom we, will follow we shall see maybe Banksy saw your Facebook well, post <laughs> who knows we've also been back to the model village in Great Yarmouth today uh, where they were very busy uh, there was a queue outside the model, model village today we can also tell you that the owner there this little barn do you remember that um, that might or might not be a Banksy work he's had several offers to buy that barn he won't say exactly how much but I understand that it is uh, they are substantial offers and he's saying he won't sell back to you Mike, thank you. Right, let's get the weather now. Here's Kate. Good afternoon. Well, it's a little more settled today compared to the last few days. We've had a little bit more sunshine, as you can see here in Freston in Suffolk. Sunflowers very appreciative of that, but it hasn't been wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. There has been a bit of cloud, North Norfolk, the East Midlands, and some variable amounts of patchy cloud elsewhere. Temperatures today getting up to 23 Celsius, so feeling a little warmer, and there is still the outside chance of a shower, but they will be isolated, and certainly not everywhere we'll see any. Now, overnight tonight, we'll see some clear space might just get a bit of mistiness by dawn minimum dropping down to 11 celsius and for tomorrow bright start some sunshine but you'll notice more cloud edging in it's a cold front but it isn't very energetic it starts to fragment there might be a bit of drizzle parts of the east midlands and beyond but sunny spells elsewhere and temperatures tomorrow again at 23 celsius so it is calming down a little and as we head further through the week midweek onwards fine dry with some sunshine that's all for now. We'll be back at 6.30 with Look East. Until then, have a good afternoon.